laboratory first by saying that um, I've never been a fireman on the, in the fire department, but um, I have some information about the origins of the department. Uh, the fire department dates back to the 50s. And in the early 50s, we had no fire protection in Bonita Springs as such. And um, primarily, uh, we had woods fires. We seldom had a, a resident fire or a structural fire. But um, they, a lot of the men in the community and some of those men, uh, most of them are gone now but we'll say like my father, Glenn Lyles, and uh, like uh, Clomer Benson, and uh, Cecil Harvard, and uh, Robert Lawhon, and uh, uh, many other uh, of the people that lived in Benitez wanted to form a sort, sort of a volunteer group to fight uh, forest fires or woods fires. and. Uh, there was a forest fire uh, tower up in uh, San Carlos around near uh, Constitution Boulevard, but um, that was a long ways off. And so they uh, had a uh, system of notification if there was a fire and as many as could would bring shovels and rakes and hose and do their best to extinguish it. And some people even had uh, equipment that they could, uh, like a bulldozer. I, I remember one man, uh, Hancock, I think was his name, was uh, fighting one fire that was on Dean Street, across from the Benita Elementary School, and they were, they were worried about it. And he brought his bulldozer and cut a fire break around it. So that got them to wanting fire protection, and I think what was the turning point for uh, fire protection was the um, fire in the uh, shell factory in Bonita. That was in 1953. I forget what month it was in, but the uh, shell factory uh, burned to the ground and it was located on the northwest corner of uh, Terry Street in Old 41. And, uh, the fire department from Fort Myers, a fire truck actually from Fort Myers came down to that fire, but of course it was in, ineffective because it could protect surrounding buildings is all it could do. And uh, so I think that was a turning point for them wanting to get a fire department in Bonita Springs. And uh, I know my dad was very active in that and a lot of the leaders in the community. And um, they didn't have any uh, place. Their method was, if you called a fire, you called it to Benson's grocery store. And Cecil Harvard, who eventually became the fire chief as the department developed, he was so interested and plus he was the man that answered the phone at Benson's. Benson's had just about the only phone in Bonita. There was only about three. And uh, there was one up at the sawmill, which uh, Clomer Benson owned the sawmill. And uh, I'll get to that in a little bit, because that fits into it. So if someone called Cecil, they had a network where they had uh, a way of letting people know, and then they would all uh, get on a, their vehicles and go to the fire. But um, after a while, they got more organized and uh, they decided to try to build a, a, get a fire truck and try to build a uh, fire building. And I'm not sure uh, the timetable in here, but it was just in the, around between 53 and 55, I would say, um, that uh, Clomer Benson had a uh, old kind of, uh, uh, a usable fire truck uh, up at his uh, sawmill and uh, as most people would know sawmills was notorious for fires and so he kept the truck there so that became their truck to begin with Cecil could call 
his boss uh, and his brother-in-law actually so the um, committee they formed a committee and naturally as you would imagine with most things you have a committee and to uh, build a fire house this is without a truck and <laughs> in anticipation of having a truck but they did have the backup of a uh, clomer's truck up at the sawmill but that the sawmill was four miles from the main part of bonita springs so it did it was adding some mileage to it so they had mostly uh, donated material a lot of uh, blocks and uh, lumber and everything was donated and a lot of labor was donated. I can't tell you who all did everything. It seems like I remember while he was alive, John Hogue told me that he did the electric on the building. He would have been about 21 or 22 at the time. And, uh, but I was uh, probably about 12 years old at the time, 11 or 12, and I was a Boy Scout. And um, so they started um, organizing to raise funds to buy a truck and uh, to go in the firehouse. <laughs> and on the firehouse was mounted this uh, tall siren that if they had a fire, they would, uh, the first person to report the fire would go to the fire department and turn on the siren and the last person by the fire department would turn it off. And, uh, but they didn't have a truck at that time in the fire department. And uh, so their main fundraisers was uh, barbecue rib dinners. And the barbecue rib dinners were held at the pavilion now, most people will not relate to what the pavilion was, but it was a um, basic uh, pole barn-like construction with a tin roof, but it did have sides and screens, and it had a concrete floor. And uh, all of this progressed through the years, uh, the concrete and everything. But anyway, that building Everything that happened in Bonita Springs of any importance happened in the in the pavilion, and the pavilion later on was destroyed and replaced by a community hall, and now the community hall is missing. So uh, that era is gone, I guess, of a small town uh, central meeting point. But in a sense, that was our city hall, and so this. Uh, committee as they we held a lot of uh, rib dinners and the way the boy scouts fit in on it they got the boy scout troop to do the uh, busing and the serving and cleanup at the uh, rib dinners and that was our uh, way of doing our scout um, deeds of good turns that we promised to do and uh, I remember one chicken barbecue that they held on the side of the fire department building before it was even constructed. They had uh, piles of uh, blocks around there and piles of builder sand. And they had, uh, uh, so the, two of the men, Stanley and uh, Pete Whitten, they were cousins. They um, headed up the chicken barbecue and they built a big pit that was about 20 foot long with concrete blocks on the sides and they laid a screen across the top and would uh, move the chickens along that uh, uh, line till they were done. And that was one dinner that we did over at the firehouse, but most of the dinners were at the pavilion and I guess when their fund got to the point that they thought the bank would finance a truck, they would put out the word for a fire truck. And uh, they had two uh, companies vie for the uh, privilege of selling us a truck. And one company was called FWD, and I think that stood for four-wheel drive. And uh, 
their truck was really a uh, really a top top uh, top drawer truck. Um, I went to the uh, demonstration. They once again at the pavilion. They had a presentation by the company to try to uh, uh, sell the community on buying a truck from them. And uh, part of their presentation was a movie. Uh, it was in the days of a reel-to-reel -reel movie where they set up a projector in the back and we had a screen up in the front of the pavilion. And I was about a 11-year-old boy sitting in the back. And it was really exciting to me to see the fire trucks uh, demonstrated. But the four-wheel drive truck, they demonstrated how it could just go in every terrain and was quite a fabulous truck but it was very expensive. Then, uh, I don't know if it was the same occasion or a separate occasion, they had a presentation by the International Harvester Company, IH, and uh, their truck was almost as good, but you know, it was not state of the art like the FWD, but it was much less expensive. So the community as a whole voted that they thought we should uh, go with the IH. And that's truck number one, and they still have that truck, and it's still operational. So that was presented to the community for the 4th of July parade. And I think that might have been in 1955, because the truck was a 1955 truck. It might have been 56, the way they presented the truck to the community was it drove in the uh, 4th of July parade. And the deal was that because we had worked so hard to raise the money, they were going to let the Boy Scouts ride on the truck. And so we were all in uniform on the 4th of July, or it might not have been the 4th, it's a Saturday, always was a Saturday for the 4th of July parade. I got a ride, I remember I got a ride with my friend's dad, uh, Lewis Warden, and uh, his father was Lewis and he was Lewis. He drove us up to Rosemary Drive where we were to meet the truck, and um, we got there and they had these cellophane, kind of cellophane material fire hats they gave all of the boys, and uh, then but then they gave us the bad news that their insurance company forbade them from having us ride the truck. And it was a big disappointment to us that we were really excited about riding the truck. But in that case, we had to walk beside the truck. So we had uh, half the troop walk on one side of the truck and half on the other side through the parade. And then the truck was in the community at the fire department, and uh, they, they, the firemen, the volunteer, it was still a volunteer fire department, and the volunteers trained every week, and they became very proficient. They had some professionals training them, and they became very well trained. and. Um, their very first structural fire was on Dean Street. And, um, well, of course, as, uh, as with all fires, especially house fires, uh, a large contingency of the community turned out just to watch. And, and unknown to us, uh, among the people that turned out was a retired fire chief from a larger city up north. And he was uh, not just watching the fire, he was watching how our, our fire firemen responded to the fire. And uh, he said after the fire that uh, he had never seen a fire department perform any better than the Bonita Springs Fire Department did on that house fire. <coughs> and of course that made our community very proud of the fire department. And so anyway, when I got out of the Army at uh, 20 years old, my dad was very involved with practically the original fire 
department committees, the ones that were active trying to form the fire department. And um, I just remembered one from the one from the beach was Bert Holly. He was really interested in fire department, even though the beach wasn't benefiting as much as here because the fire station was a long ways from the beach. But still, Bert Holly was one of the uh, pushers on the fire department. But um, what they were vying for is having the county to make us a fire district and tax us for the, have the fire department tax supported through the property tax. And um, they were in a big campaign to get the community on board to do this and get a referendum on that uh, action that coming November. I got out of the Army in 1964, so it would have been November of 64 that they were going to have it on the referendum. And my dad was really, he canvassed the whole community uh, asking people to vote for it. And you might wonder why he was so enthused about getting this it, by imposing a tax, and of course most of us don't like to impose new taxes but the problem was is on a voluntary basis even though it meant safety of their home and safety of their property they could get no more than 50 percent of the homeowners in Bonita to pay their annual dues of five dollars so as things go you you take another angle that might force them to pay and um, so my dad told me, he says, now I don't want to tell you what to do, son, but he says, I really want you to vote yes for this. But the only problem was I wasn't uh, registered to vote and you could not vote at that time until you were 21 years old. And so when I was, um, and but you had to be registered in order to vote in the, uh, November um, referendum to vote on the November referendum you had to be registered by September and my birthday was in October to be 21 and so my dad and I went up to Fort Myers to the uh, voter registration office and the lady that was in charge of it Lee County voter registration daddy told her that I was going to be 21 in less than a month and he really wanted me to be able to vote on this referendum. He was really enthused on it. And he said, uh, was there any way that she could register me to vote ahead of time? And she said, sure, we'll accommodate. She says, we're really proud to see young men interested in getting to vote. And so she registered me before I was 21 and of course, at the time of the referendum, I voted yes. Fortunately, everyone, uh, overwhelming majority, voted yes. And uh, from that time on, our fire department was supported by a uh, tax on your property. So anyway, I guess that would conclude all the information I have on my history with the fire department. Mm -hmm.